In this video, we are going to take a look in what I think is the best Zigbee remote from IKEA, which is the Symphonisk Gen 2. I already check uh, almost uh, every remote uh, available from IKEA, so if you are interested, you can check them out uh, in my videos on my channel. This remote, even though it was supposed uh, to be developed uh, for controlling uh, Symphonic speakers or other uh, Sonos speakers you might have, works just fine as a remote and I think it's uh, a better option than the other that are available. And also, depending on the region, it may also be the best value proposition because, for example, in Italy it's the same price as the basic steer bar remote. But I know that in the US it should be quite a little more expensive, but anyway, in my opinion, it's worth it because I think it's a very good proposition. But to be honest, I have some reliability problems with two buttons on this remote. But I don't know if it was due to the Home Assistant version, the firmware version of my Zigbee coordinator or what else because it was working fine at the beginning. So maybe I'll do some other investigation and I'm also looking into Zigbee to MTTQ. So maybe there's another video coming up later. Also another quick disclaimer, as any other IKEA product, I'm sorry if the pronunciation is not the correct one, but this is the way with IKEA. So just be patient with me. Now, getting started, the first part of the video is going to be a quick unboxing and a check of this uh, device and then I'm going to show you how to add it into Home Assistant, in particular using ZB Home Automation and then I'm going to show you what the triggers and entities are uh, exposed to Home Assistant. So now, let's uh, start with the unboxing by looking uh, quickly at the box. As for the steer bar remote, also here we have two standard EAA batteries. So it's a very nice environmental move from IKEA because these batteries are more bloody available and also in rechargeable form. Here we have some manuals, safety information and whatever. Here there's a little pad to be used in wire wall mounting. And here we have a magnetic mount and also some adhesive if you want to install it on the wall. Here is the remote, as you can see the shape is quite similar to the steer bar. We have here on the back the lock mechanism to unlock the back. Here up the LED status. And now if I just take out for a moment the steer bar, we can have a quick comparison. And as you can see the shape is basically the same, the form factor too. But uh, the big difference for me is that uh, instead of four buttons, we have uh, seven. Now let's quickly open the back so we can check what's inside here and very simply we have the slot for the two batteries and the button for the pairing mode. And now for the second part of this video let's put in some batteries and start adding this to Home Assistant. In order to enter in pairing mode we have to press four times the pairing button here on the bottom of the device and as you can see the LED on top start flashing quickly and then it's a more breathing effect, denoting that the device is in pairing mode. Now, while the device is in pairing mode, let's quickly jump into Home Assistant. Let's go into Settings, Device and Services. And if you haven't already, add the ZigBee Home Automation integration. And then here on the bottom, let's click on Add the Device. And I should be popping up very quickly. Here it is. Now let's give a few seconds for completing the configuration. Oh, and by the way, as usual, I leave in the description the version of Home Assistant that I'm using in this video and also the Zigbee dongle that I used. Here, let's just quickly give it a name so we can find it later, like Symphonisk Remote 01. Now let's jump into an automation so I can show you all the triggers that are available. Here, if we select as a device the Symphonisk remote we've just added, we have the pressed action for all the buttons, but some of them we have also the continuously pressed and double clicked action. Then we have some status information about the battery level and the firmware update. Now let's do a quick check also on what is available as an action, which basically is only the, the fact that the identify button has been pressed. 
As stated before, I've been using this remote for a few months now. I had only some issue with the reliability of two buttons because not always they were picked up in Home Assistant, but all the other ones are working just fine. And I'm also looking to do some other tests with other ZigBee coordinator. And also I've been checking out ZigBee to MTTQ. So I'll do some videos in the future about those and let you know if anything has changed. As always, uh, thank you for watching, I hope this video has been helpful for you, and have a nice day, see you on the next video.